First of all, I want to say congratulations to the IPA for the work it does, the important work it does, drawing out some of the big issues that are often on the national uh, agenda for debate. But on the issue of constitutional recognition and an Indigenous body, not necessarily the same thing, you had a fine piece in the Australian newspaper today. You see a lot of problems with what was loosely proposed uh, yesterday by Ken White. We know there's not a lot of detail there, but, but what was put on the table. What's your concerns? Uh, well, the chief concern uh, that the IPA has with uh, the voice proposal is uh, the idea that we're dividing Australians based on their race or uh, skin colour and then conferring different rights or responsibilities based on those surface level characteristics. Um, so the voice proposal in particular is, a, is a, in my view, a complete upending of uh, our democratic and representative institutions. It's not clear from the interviews I've seen with the Minister, and I've watched him and read what he has said very carefully, it's not clear whether this new body would be created via a constitutional referendum and whether it would be enshrined in the Constitution or whether it would be something legislated by the Parliament. It's not clear uh, what uh, would be the method of choosing people to be the voice, uh, whatever all of that means, whether they're elected or not. I made the point last night, uh, you could see a situation where everyone in Australia goes to the polls to elect their parliament and then people with a different skin colour go to a separate poll to elect basically another parliament and that second parliament would basically, I have to say, uh, second-guess the work of the first parliament. That's a concern. Yeah, that, like I said, it's a complete, uh, complete transformation of our democratic pr procedure. Um, it's uh, completely feasible that we might see the establishment of a separate uh, electoral role for uh, Indigenous Australians. It's uh, it's completely uh, a perversion of our of our uh, the history of our institutions. If this voice idea, this concept of an Indigenous voice, uh, went to the people via a referendum, do you think it would carry? Uh, I believe that the... Uh, the pro my understanding from Mr White's speech was that the intention is that a referendum will be held, uh, although, of course, we have no idea of the finer details of the proposal. Uh, my view is that the proposal would probably be defeated uh, at a referendum, but I think no matter what the result is, I think the Australian people will lose. Uh, I think if it succeeds, then we have this, uh, this, this new uh, body enshrined in the Constitution, which is completely divisive, and if we lose, then uh, the results will be used by people who are, have an interest in stoking division between segments of the Australian population. There's sort of two tracks that the government could take here. I have heard that they're interested really only in removing the race provision in the Constitution, if they can. Of course, that requires a referendum to be successfully carried, majority of people, majority of states. Uh, and also perhaps to put some recognition of Indigenous people in somewhere like the preamble. That's what I would call sort of the, um, the lowest change model. The other idea being pursued is this idea of a voice. Now, that could well be via a recognition uh, referendum. I think that would fail. I agree with you there. The other course of, uh, to take would be for this voice to be dealt with as a bill in the parliament. Now, with the support of the Labor Party, who want this and more, it would likely carry. How do you think Australians would feel about an issue... I think is potentially divisive as this being dealt with by the parliament in this term without it really being debated prior to the election. Yeah, I think I think it is divisive and I think there's uh there's more than uh more than enough Australians who would uh, see it that way. I think many Australians would remember the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders Commission, which was uh, which was a scandal-plagued body uh, before it was abolished by the Howard government in uh, 2006, I believe. Um, I, I see uh, a similar proposal along uh, in that vein to be uh, just really more of the same. I'm not sure, uh, you know, it's, it's just a special body uh, for some people and which serves no real purpose except for uh, enriching uh, an industry uh, in Canberra. And look, I understand the argument that Indigenous people want to feel that they have a voice in their parliament. 
But Linda Burney, who was Labor's spokeswoman on these issues, is Indigenous. Ken White, of course, is in the Cabinet. He is Indigenous. Malandir McCarthy, Pat Dodson, you could keep going on. Mm. Um, isn't that the voice for Indigenous people? Well, that's right. One of the... Um, another problem I have with the, the constitutionally enshrined voice is that uh, you have this body which gives one view of the Indigenous population or one purported view of the Indigenous community, um, but it can't represent all Indigenous voices and it can't represent the, the range of views that would be held by that community. And effectively, I think it would crowd out a lot of those other Indigenous voices. But it, it also, I think, you know, in, in a practical sense, and I come from a policy-making background, every bill has the potential to impact Indigenous people. So if you were to carve out legislation and put it off to this committee, uh, this voice, to look at prior to being enacted through the parliament, or God forbid afterwards, you know, to second guess or perhaps even veto it, the Tax Act applies to Indigenous people. The Medicare Act uh, applies oh. to Indigenous people. If it didn't, then we would really be setting ourselves up for a situation where you'd have laws for one skin colour, laws for another, and that's apartheid. Uh, yeah, so that's... Um, obviously, all Indigenous Australians are Australians, uh, and so every Act of Parliament passed by the Australian Parliament affects Indigenous Australians and non-Indigenous Australians alike. Uh, it's completely incoherent that uh, you could somehow uh, demarcate which, which bills affect some people and which bills affect others. Do you think we're getting into a situation here in Australia, for, for so long we've done everything we can to level people out for there to be genuine equality uh, and not to try and say that, you know, your length of time in this country means you're more Australian than, than the others. You know, we do our best to say to new migrants, you join the team, you're Australian as much as anyone who's been here for a number of generations. Measuring people on their Aboriginality or length of time or connection to Australia, isn't that taking us back? Backwards, not not forwards. I think it's uh, it's an unhealthy uh, fixation on um, irrelevant uh, characteristics. I would say for um, uh, policy makers in Canberra and in, in the states. I think uh, we need to deal with the world as it is now, uh, and not not with uh, uh, history going back you know, hundreds, thousands of years. I think it's uh, largely irrelevant. I want to return to the start. You know, as I said, there there's sort of two issues here. One is um, constitutional recognition of whatever that might be, recognising the place of Indigenous Australians in the Constitution, I take that probably to be in the preamble, and, and perhaps mm. removing that race power. And then there's mm. the, the much broader push for this Indigenous body, either via law or enshrined in the Constitution. Do you see any chance that Australia might go down the path of constitutional recognition, as something in the preamble, removing the race power, that that might be supported even if the idea of the voice is rejected? Um, my view is uh, that I think those proposals, which were the consensus view back in maybe 2012, um, are no longer acceptable to the, the advocates for change. I don't think, I don't think they'd cop it, um, although I would very much support uh, the removal of the race power. Um, or, but um, I, think, I think we're currently at a voice at least, uh, and I think advocates will, uh, won't accept anything less. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think uh, one in the clock back's not going to happen. It's uh, now this separate body uh, that is the main ask of the Indigenous leaders. I'm not saying the Indigenous people. I have to say mm. I still think it's a question for the elites. Thank you very much for your time, Morgan. Thanks for having me.